Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Hello, my friend. What a delight it is to be with you today. If at all possible right now, reach over, get your Bible and join me, please. My Bible is open to the New Testament book of Mark, the Gospel of Mark in chapter 12. And frankly, to some uh, familiar verses, I'm sure, for many of you. Well, let me begin uh, this week of broadcasting by asking this question. How well do you know your Bible? How, how skilled do you feel uh, you are in your understanding of what the Bible means? Now, this is, this is not a trick question. I really am interested in you pondering your Bible knowledge. On a scale of 1 to 10, how well grounded do you feel you are in what the Word of God teaches? I'm asking the question because some very skillful Bible students are going to come to Jesus in our passage today, and they're going to ask a question to see, they're going to see how skillfully Jesus answers. The problem is, is that this, this group rarely asks of this kind of question to let God's word make them uh, more godly. They ask these kinds of questions to show off how much they themselves know. Now, these men love the interaction about the Bible, but they had, well, they had no thought on letting the impact of the Bible affect their hearts. Now, now that is, has to change today. We need to confront letting the Word of God impact our lives. In today's episode of Mark, here in Mark chapter 12, a, a Bible quiz is going to turn into, well, it's going to turn into a soul-winning session. I wish I could say it ends uh, with us knowing the exact answer, but, well, you'll see. Get your Bible open, Mark chapter 12. Along the way today, my friend, I'm going to be giving you the opportunity to communicate with me using text messaging, as well as at the end of the broadcast, my announcer telling you how to get gospel tracks from us. Bible Tracks uh, Echoes is the radio arm of Bible Tracks Incorporated. And right now in my hand is one of the tracks that we publish. This one's entitled Infant Baptism with a question mark. Infant Baptism, that's the title at the top of the gospel track. At the bottom of the face of the track, it asks this question, what does the Bible say? And friend, I have, I know right now listening to this broadcast are people who believe tenaciously that they ought to take their Bible, their babies and have them baptized at their church. And they have this idea that by so doing, their babies are safe to get into heaven. Now, let me say this. The sad news is that some babies die before they have the opportunity to develop and grow and understand right from wrong. I think those children are safe, saved in Jesus Christ. But once a child knows right from wrong and they then willfully do wrong, they need to be saved personally themselves through receiving Jesus Christ as Savior. I believe wholeheartedly and working with children, explaining to them the gospel clearly, simply, so that they can respond and ask Jesus Christ to be their Savior. What does the Bible say about infant baptism? The answer is nothing, but it does talk about baptism. Baptism is important, but not as a means of having our sins washed away. Here's a good track for people who are relying upon a real religious righteous act as a means of getting to heaven, but heaven is not gained by works, is it? I want you to have this track. I want you to have a, a sample packet of all of our English gospel tracks. Now, at the end, as I said, my announcer is going to be giving to you a uh, mailing address, an email address, and so on. Pick out a method that works for you, and let me please send you a free sample packet of all of our English gospel tracks. Well, come with me right now, Mark chapter 12. Let me begin reading at verse 28. It says this, 
And one of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together, and perceiving that he, that is Jesus, had answered them well, asked him, Which is the first commandment of all? And Jesus answered him, The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might, mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment, and the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. And the scribe said unto him, Well, master, thou hast said the truth, for there is one God, and there is none other but he. And to love him with all the heart, with all the understanding, with all the soul, and with all the strength, and to love thy, his neighbor as himself is more than all all burnt whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. Now listen. And when Jesus saw that he answered discreetly, he said unto him, Thou art not far from the kingdom of God. And no man after that durst ask him any questions. Here a man comes and asks a question, and it turns into Jesus challenging him with how close he is to the kingdom, to knowing Christ as Savior. This event I just read is also recorded over in the Gospel of Matthew in chapter 22. And like most events recorded in more than one of the Gospels, Matthew has some details that Mark does not and vice versa. Here in Mark's account, the emphasis seems to be the reaction uh, of the questioner, the man who is the key one asking in the question and his response, his reaction to Jesus' answer. Matthew's account tells us that the questioner of Jesus Jesus came and he asked Jesus this question uh, about which is the, the commandment with the greatest weight and so on. And if we go back to Matthew chapter 22 there in verse 35, we're told there that the man came and our Bible says, or King James Bible says that he came tempting Jesus. Now that word tempting is also translated in our King James Bible using the word testing. Now, both words, tempting and testing, are, are accurate translations of the Greek word. The t context of the passage is what determines which word best serves for the understanding. I feel that here the word testing would better serve us, and I feel it's based upon two things. Number one, based upon how Jesus answers these, these Pharisees that come and ask the question, and secondly, on how this Pharisee responds to Jesus' answer. Now, frequently on the broadcast here recently, I have talked about the heart motive behind some of the people asking some of the questions that, that have been put to Jesus. I've said that the questions we ask, you and I ask even, and how we ask them can really reveal the heart motive behind our asking these questions. And I think we see that here in these passages. When Jesus perceived that the questioners in some situations and their heart motive was sinful, he answered them in less than a direct way. But when one person comes and asks a, righteous, a question out of a righteous motive, Jesus responds in clear and direct answers. This is how I see Jesus answering this man here in our story. Now, let me just stop here and remind us that God does judge our heart motives. God does not simply notice our motives. He doesn't just simply evaluate our heart motives. God judges our motives. He, he passes a moral judgment. That, that's a serious thing because it means that we can, really can, sin in our hearts and be held accountable for the sins in our heart. Hebrews 4, verse 12, has long been burned into my memory bank. It says this, The word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a, listen now, and is a discerner, a judge of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Sometime go back and get your Strong's Concordance out and look at that word discerner and you're going to find out it means that there's somebody going to be putting a critic, a judge there over the thoughts and intents of your heart. 
And by the way, if you have a cross-reference Bible, I hope you do, you're going to see that there are some uh, other places where this same truth is taught about God judging our thoughts and our intents. You could go over to 2 Corinthians 10, verses 4 and 5. Go to 1 Corinthians 14, verse 25, and certainly go to Matthew chapter 5, beginning at verse 21. By the way, there in Matthew 5, this is the whole basis behind Jesus' words about a person committing adultery in their what? In their heart, being guilty, even though the outward act of adultery wasn't done. They were guilty nonetheless. Now, on Wednesday's broadcast, I'm going to return to this story, and we're going to get into it in a more uh, fuller way. Uh, Suffice it for you and I today is that God is the evaluator, the judge of our hearts. Now, let me just stop and talk to those of us who know Jesus Christ as Savior, believers here. Why do you and I serve God? Why do you and I go to church? Why do we take Sunday school? Why do we give our tithes and offerings? What is the heart motive behind all this? I'm afraid God is refusing much of what you and I might offer as service and worship because he sees that it comes out of a heart whose motive is out of obligation rather than love. The great commandment is to love God from your heart, not out of duty. Hmm, Let me stop here. What are you thinking right now? How are you responding to this broadcast would you, would you text message me? I want you to text me the word gospel, would you? The word gospel to this number, to area code 708-515-4086. I'm going to give that here in just a second. And by the way, I'm going to give this number again in about a minute from now. But text me the word gospel. Here's that number again. This is just for text messaging. It is area code 708 708- 515-4086. When you do that, you'll be able to uh, respond to the broadcast, rate the broadcast, ask questions about the broadcast, and even help us uh, have some input. You can have input about future broadcast. Well, I challenged believers a moment ago. Let me come back and challenge those that have yet not received Jesus Christ as their Savior. Let me ask you a question. Is there sinful, ungodly, immoral, even at times hateful thoughts in your heart? If so, and you know it is so, God has judged you guilty in your heart. And because you're guilty before God, you need a Savior. Your heart will either be exposed before the cleansing, forgiving power of Jesus and his shed blood at Calvary, or your heart is going to be exposed before the holy, unflinching judge of all the earth on Judgment Day. But at that day, there'll be no opportunity for salvation, for cleansing, for to be for the gift of eternal life to be given. You need to take care of that issue today. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. Friend, all of us are guilty. We may have done different activities outwardly, but we're all sinners, you and I both know, in the, in the intents of our heart. Tell me what you think. Here's that, here's that text messaging number again. It's area code 708-515-4086. 708-515-4086. Text me the word gospel. You stay tuned. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.